Hi, I'm Johnny Trung, and this is my colleague, Drake Gardner. We're part of the academic team, and we're excited to talk to you about Benchling today. We work with scientists all over the world and empower scientific research in academia. We'll be giving you an exclusive overview of Benchling and diving into some of the capabilities of our product. So let's get started. I'd like to take a moment to give you an overview of our company so you can understand why we do what we do and how we got there. Benchling was started in 2012 by our two co-founders, Saji and Ashu. While attending MIT, they experienced their own frustrations with scientific research. But surprisingly, most of these came from how science worked and communicated. Sharing data between science was often a slow and painful process, involving a lot of back and forth communication that hindered collaboration. And the lack of a central and searchable data repository meant researchers would spend countless hours trying to find existing data and generating new results. After realizing how prevalent these issues were across all fields of science, they sought to improve the way scientists operate. And that's why Benchling was created. Benchling is a cloud-based data management platform that is scientifically aware, allows for seamless collaboration, and provides insights to accelerate research discoveries. Best of all, it's built on a trusted open platform that adapts to your science. Since our inception, we've always kept Benchling completely free for academia. That's because we know that the innovation to transform every aspect of our lives from the drugs we take to the foods we eat, even the clothes we wear, starts in academia. Benchling is committed though to support the entire biotechnology ecosystem. In addition to our support of academia, we've grown to support companies of all sizes that are taking their innovations to market. Whether you're a growing startup or an enterprise pharma company, Benchling is your single source of truth for biotech R&D. Let's see a snapshot of where Benchling is today. We have users from over 7,500 academic institutions that love our product. We have over 700 plus biotech customers that are solving real world challenges from addressing world hunger to developing new medicines. And across all of our sectors, we have 200,000 scientists across the globe who power their science on Benchling. And finally, we have 800 plus employees, many with scientific backgrounds to support our community and to continue to build a stellar product for you all. Now, I could spend forever telling you why scientists choose to use Benchling. I'd rather you hear why other scientists believe Benchling is the choice for modern science. Scientists like Laura Quinto from Yale often find that ELN has really helped their lab collaborate better together, and Benchling gives them the right combination of sequence design and data management for that. Meanwhile, Russell Taylor at the University of Chicago has successfully transitioned all his cloning work to Benchling after using expensive softwares at a previous research setting. And then there's Sam Waterworth from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, whose extensive and careful search for an ELN led her to find that Benchling was literally the best option that ticked all the boxes for her. Before we deep dive into our product, I want to familiarize you with Benchling's modern and intuitive interface. From here, we'll assume that you've already created your free account, but if you haven't, go check out Benchling.com to sign up right now. When you log into your account, you'll be taken to your workspace where you can start planning your experiments. I want to call it this global navigation panel here that centralizes the various functions of the Benchling platform. If you hover over each icon on the sidebar, you'll get a short description of its function. Click into an icon and it'll expand and open a module. Click that button again and it'll collapse back. Let's start with the home button. Here we display files that you recently worked on so you can continue where you left off. We also have a calendar feature that shows when you performed your experiments. Start pointing out all your work for the week or even the rest of the month. Then we have the projects button. Projects are where your files live on Benchling, from protocols and notes to DNA and protein sequences. You can organize your work across multiple projects, and inside a project, you can find more relevant files or further categorize your work with folders. Next, there's the search button. Search will scour through all your files on Benchling. Type in specific keywords or create custom search filters to find the data that you need. Never search through endless paper notebooks again. Now we have our Create button. Create allows you to generate any file type on Benchling that would be relevant to your work. It's great for those of you who want to dive right in and start designing your experiments. And let's not forget about external data. With external data, you can transfer your files from existing cloud platforms into Benchling seamlessly. We currently support integration with OneDrive, Box, Dropbox, or Google Drive. Importing your files into Benchling has never been easier. And finally, we have your user icon here representing your Benchling avatar. 
Click into this to access features to customize your benchling experience so that it accurately reflects the science that you're doing. In this next section, Drake is going to start off with a demo of the Benchling notebook. Now that we're familiar with Benchling's interface, let's take a look at Benchling's notebook. This cloud-based electronic lab notebook allows you to record your experimental data while simultaneously sharing your work with colleagues and standardizing your workflows and documentation in the process. Let's dive right in. To look at the notebook, we will first need to create a notebook entry. We'll do this by clicking on the plus button in the navigation bar, then choosing entry. You'll have the option to create a new notebook entry from scratch or use a template. You'll notice when creating any new file that Benching will ask which project folder the file should be saved. All files in Benching will be stored in these folders. A notebook entry functions like any other word processor, allowing you to customize the look and feel of your document. You can adjust header levels, add in hyperlinks using the link button, create various types of lists, including to-do lists with checkmark boxes. And one of my favorite features, you can toggle on and off spell check using the settings in the upper right hand corner. Beyond its basic word processing functions, the notebook is rich with features made for scientists to help streamline their research. Using the insert button, you can divide up your note taking by day, or you can create Excel like tables. With any table, you can rename it, or change the name of the rows and columns. You can design custom drop down menus to use within your tables by clicking on the settings button and choosing selector. In this example, I'm adding two options to my drop down experimental and control. With our table designed, I can now start adding in our values. Starting with the drop down, I'll select experimental, then I'll directly type in the values for the starting and ending columns. For the final column, I'll use Benchling's built-in formulas to calculate the result. These tables become particularly powerful when you use them within your created templates. To design a template, we'll first click on our avatar, then select Feature Settings. Under Template Collections, you'll be able to design your templates for your lab. The design templates should be maintained and not used directly. You can use templates similar to how you create any notebook entry. By clicking on the plus button, selecting Entry, and choosing the template. I am using a template I already built. Once it loads, I'll change the file name to properly document what I'm doing. In this template, there are custom functions to automatically calculate the reagents volumes in my master mix. And steps to check off. Spending time to design nice templates can dramatically enhance your lab's data capture and note standardizations. You can designate areas to be filled in or add reminders to the template users. For example, in this template, I am being prompted to upload my resulting electrophoresis gel and to tag my collaborators. The collaborator will be notified by email that they've been tagged in my entry and will be able to preview or download the data for themselves. At any time while working on the file, you can see the outline of the document on the right hand side. By clicking on the clock button, you'll be able to see the history of the document and restore or duplicate any previous versions. The information button will allow you to see additional information about the document or export it as a PDF. Benchlink's notebook makes recording experimental data and collaborating with colleagues a breeze. Next, I'll be showing Benchlink's molecular biology. Molecular biology is a premier suite of design tools that accelerates your biology workflows. It allows scientists to analyze DNA and proteins, create primers, assemble plasmids, and even batch design CRISPR experiments all while the set is being synced to the cloud. Let's jump back in and see how this is done. Let's take a look at how we can work with DNA sequences. You can create a new DNA sequence by clicking on the plus button, then selecting DNA sequence, and import DNA sequence. Benching allows users to upload sequences a few different ways. Directly from your computer, external databases such as NCBI and AdGene, from chromosomal regions, or by inputting a raw sequence. Let's use a gene from NCBI for now. I'll be using the gene name, and Benching will do the rest. Notice how I have options around how I would like my sequence imported. For biological files, there are unique subpages distinct from notebook entries. Under the Sequence Map page, you'll be able to see a collective view of your DNA sequence. You can change what you view, toggling off annotations, primers, or other features using the Settings button in the upper right hand corner. 
When you select a region of your sequence, you can add annotations, primers, or translations using the Create pulldown. Under the Analyze pulldown, you can work with the sequence further, magically designing primers using the Primer Wizard or working with the translational product, inspecting the amino acid properties, or optimizing the codons based on the organism. You'll notice on your local side panel, there's a rich set of design features at your disposal. You can change or view annotations. You can select specific lists of restriction enzymes shown in the map, or types of enzymes shown in the map. You can even search for enzymes and see how many times they're present, and choose an enzyme to run a virtual digest. In this case, I'm using the split workspace view to view both the virtual digest image and the digest values. Using the primer button, you can create new primers or attach existing ones you already have. You can then link those primers to generate an in silico PCR product directly in Benchling. Using the alignment button, you can align other sequences to your file, either sequences on Benchling already, or you can upload new ones. In this case, if I upload a Sanger sequencing results file, I will also be able to view our trace or chromatogram. Once aligned, you can scroll along your sequence and see each matching base pair represented by a gray rectangle at the top. You can change the chromatogram by adjusting the scroller on the left, and expand or contract your viewing window using the slider at the bottom. The CRISPR button allows us to bulk design and analyze guide RNAs targeting our file. We can choose various parameters, including the type of PAM sequence, select the region we want to target, and optimize for on and off target scores. Then we can choose the plasma to assemble our guides into. Benching has some common plasmas pre-populated. When you click assemble, your plasma will be built complete with your guide. Now that we've seen how to import a gene, work with the sequence, adding primers and annotations, and how to analyze it various ways on Benchling. Let's take a look how we can work with plasmas on Benchling. I'll be assembling a plasma using a traditional restriction enzyme-based cloning method. Let's go take a look. I've already prepared our insert with the associated restriction enzyme sites. The next step is to import a plasma to work with. We can do this by directly importing from AdGene, similar to how we've done previously with our gene from MCBI. Under Search External Databases, we can paste a link directly to the AdGene page. A plasmid file functions very similar to a linear DNA file, except now you can also rotate the plasmid. I find it helpful to view the plasmid map next to the sequence map using the Benchling split workspace mode. To ligate our gene into our plasmid, we'll be using the traditional restriction enzyme ligation method, meaning the next step is to determine which enzymes we'll be using. I've already done this and found the restriction enzymes XHO1 and CAI1 to work best for our plasma and our gene. With our plasma and insert ready, now comes one of my favorite features of Benchling. We can use the assembly wizard to combine our insert and our plasma. First, click on the assembly wizard button on the bottom right. Then select create new assembly. In this case, we'll be doing a digest and ligate. You'll see a window appear at the bottom walking through the process. To set our selection, We'll first click on the backbone arrow in the assembly wizard. Then we'll shift click on the two enzymes we previously highlighted. You'll see the map highlight both on the sequence view and the plasma view. The highlighted section will become our backbone when we click on the set from selection button on the assembly wizard. Next, we need to set the insert. Moving back to our insert file, we can repeat the selection process as before. A handy feature of the digest tool is that the enzymes you selected while in the plasma will also show here. Holding shift click again for both enzymes, we can select our entire insert. Then click set from selection button on the assembly wizard. Benching will automatically check for any errors in the assembly. In this case, it all looks good. So we can click on the green done check mark, rename our file, and click assemble. With our assembly built, let's take a look how easy it is to share our results in a notebook. If I return to a notebook page, I can now link the plasma directly into the notes by clicking and dragging the file onto the page. You notice an embedded preview window will pop up when it's done this way, unlike when the add sign is used and only a link is shown. Benching's molecular biology allows scientists to streamline their research and centralize their workflows. And its seamless integration with Benching's notebook is really what takes it over the top, making Benching so incredibly powerful for scientists globally. 
Let's go back to Johnny and learn about some of the ways scientists are using Benchling all over the world. We've interacted with hundreds of users to understand how they use Benchling. And today, I'll share some of the most common ways they do so. Research is already complex enough. Make it easy for you and your lab to operate by adapting Benchling to your scientific and operational needs. Create an organization on Benchling for your lab and invite all of your colleagues. You can easily share files across your organization, creating a library of plasmids or primers for your entire lab. Standardize the protocols used in your lab with our templates feature. You can ensure that every member, new or old, is using the most updated experimental conditions for any of your experiments done across your lab. Most importantly, customize our biology tools to reflect your science. You can create feature libraries for sequence annotations that your lab would like to detect. You can use feature libraries to auto-annotate every new sequence you create on Benchling. Or create a custom list of restriction enzymes. This will allow you to analyze sequences with enzymes you actually have stocked within your lab. Reduce time and effort that it takes to do experiments with effective project management on Benchling. Centralize and trace everything back to Benchling. Backup raw or processed data on any notebook entry. You can even preview the data that you have stored. You can also upload PowerPoint slides or even PDFs. From those, you can insert excerpts into your entry from important research articles to preview the data or results that you need. Increase operational visibility across your lab. If you've been added to a project, you can see what lab mates are working on and plan accordingly. Being proactive prevents and reduces any scheduling conflicts you have with other members. And don't forget how easily Benchling integrates your lab notebook with sequence design tools. You can drag and drop your sequences into your notebook entries and create direct linkages to those sequences across all of your experiments. Maximize your results when you do science together. Use Benchling to coordinate research efforts with lab mates or collaborators. In addition to adding collaborators onto a project, you can share protocols and data with non-Benchling users with our read-only share links. Don't keep your science gated and make it accessible to whomever you choose. Have multi-step protocols with numerous tasks? Well, divide up tasks easily by at mentioning your collaborator. Each time a collaborator has been mentioned, they'll receive a link to the corresponding notebook entry that they've been mentioned in. This is a great way to update your experiment progress asynchronously. Want to check out your experiment progress in more detail? Track and review any edits made to any file on Benchling and see what user made those changes. Follow up with the necessary colleagues if you have questions about what they did. That's all we have for today. In case you're looking for more great Benchling content, check out our website or follow us on social media. And most importantly, don't forget to sign up. Try out Benchling for free and see how intuitive it is for yourself. Take care and see you next time.